All right. Uh, today we're going to practice interval, um, but we just learned in our lecture with Sibelius first the application. Again, the purpose of this practice is that you may turn the theoretical work into the visceral sensory information that is necessary to build your inner ear and to exercise the audio muscles that all of you have. So uh, we're going to need, uh, as usual, our Sibelius first application. I already have it open, so I will begin, mm, put myself over there. Okay, so we're going to start a new file together and uh, we're going to pick the piano. Okay, so we have a empty manuscript. First, I would like you to Pull this down a little bit. Let's see if it'll let me do that. There we go. Okay. Uh, so first, we're going to save it. So that is Command S. We're going to save it to the desktop as um, interval music 1400. Here we go. So now uh, we're going to name it right click. <laughs> uh, not very responsive mouse here. Okay, right click. And we're going to choose text title. Title is going to be interval practice. And right click again, go back to text, and you're going to pick composer. Click it in and put your name right there. I am Professor Wong. Okay, and um, you don't have to, but it's really good um, habit to use the lyricist tab and just to put today's date in. And so today's date is something, 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 20 something. All right, and as you can see, you can move these freely. Okay, um, the next thing we're going to do is to pull out the keyboard. Go to view up here and you're going to say panels. It's under panels and you're going to check keyboard. All right, so the keyboard is up and we also have the keypad, which I'm gonna move somewhat close to our keyboard and move my head over there. There we go. So now you have keypad right next to your keyboard. This is a pretty good workstation. Make sure that your um, keypad is nearby. So you can always click the note value, click on um, any tab that will be helpful. Okay, all right, first thing um, we're going to get out of the hyperactivity. And the first thing we're going to do is find a note. First note, why not? Middle C, it's pretty obvious. So what I would do is select bar number one. See it's highlighted and I'm going to type letter N, type letter N for note input. All right, so type letter N 
So we have note input, right? And quarter note is automatically by default lit up. That's fine for our purpose. First, we're going to type in the middle C. And now we have one note, and uh, the next note is going to be the diatonic next note, which is the D. So, and then we're gonna type C again. Okay, but this time, um, maybe I would like the second C to stay a little bit longer. In which case, I'm going to undo, and undo is command Z. And I'm gonna go back to my keypad and I'm gonna choose the half note. And then I'm going back to the keyboard. I'm gonna type in this C. There you are. So right now, what we have here is A. You can select the first note, right? Um, and type Command T for just any kind of text. Um, and we're gonna call this melodic intervals. Okay, these are intervals that are not stacked up and being played simultaneously. They are being played next to each other in succession, All right? So this is, so I'm not sure why uh, my keyboard isn't playing. I know why. We have to go to play and set up and audio engine options, uh, interface, we're gonna choose whatever the um, system speaker. Let's see, hopefully, there we go. Now we have sound back. So. Um, you guys are gonna have this issue sometimes also. Uh, the software might have its own mind. <laughs> uh, so I was using this uh, for Zoom earlier, that's why uh, I had to reset it. Uh, but just so you know where it is, it's under play and under setup, and you just click on this little thing here, um, and it'll give you an option, okay, to um, reset your audio engine. Good, all right, so now we have this back and what we're gonna hear is um, two things you may do with this. First, you're going to type in, this is, and what I do is um, I use command L. Command L is basically lyrics, all right? I'm gonna type this up for you as well. So, Command plus L is going to give you lyrics. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We click on one note and we do Command L. This will give us the opportunity to name these notes. So this is obviously C. Press the space bar to advance to the next note. D, C, all right, once you're done, you may C, all right. Once you're done, press escape key to get out of the lyrics input mode. Now you've exited the lyrics input mode and here we are. We have a melodic interval, but what interval is it? Mm -hmm. So this is obviously they're next to each other. Here it is, I'm gonna make it very big so you can see. We have here C, which is Do, Do is on the line. Re is in the space. Do, so they're next to each other. And in these cases, their value is two. So this has to be a Two, second interval, okay? So, but what is it? Is it a minor second? Is it a major second? So, we go back to the keyboard. 
All right, so this is not so obvious on the score. That's why you always refer to the keyboard. So this is the C, this is Do, and this is Re. There is a note in between them. That means this is a major second. So then you can do this, okay? You can say, click the first note, and you're going to type L. L, just the letter L, just the letter L. You have all these lines come up, and you can pick one of the bracket. All right, this is, mm, if I were you, I would probably do this bracket. So these are, again, command T would give you a text input. And I would call this major second. So this is a major second melodic interval. All right, and let's keep going. Next bar, we will do the same. All right, we first type N for note input. Automatically, we have quarter note lit up. We're gonna go back to middle C, and we're gonna choose the next note, the next white key. And keep in mind, we're gonna choose the half note just to make it a little longer. All right, twice as long. So this, at this point, there's gonna be a lot of copy and paste as you know it. But the most important thing, you can play it. Yeah, you can hear now the difference between this interval, this melodic interval, and this melodic interval, all right? So uh, same thing, we can name this, all right? Name this note. Again, this is command L for lyrics, which means this is C, space bar to advance to the next note, E, space bar to advance to the next note, C. Escape, escape to get out of the input mode. All right, and this one, we can do exactly the same thing, which means we just need to duplicate this. So select this bracket, if you'd like, right? Select, just highlight it, and then hold down the Option key, and then just click. Automatically, it is copied, duplicated, same thing, okay? And now we do the same as before. This is C, this is E. It's a third. It's definitely three because it is line, space, line. So we have the, the value, the digit value for this interval has to be three because it's one, two, three, okay? One, two, and it's one, two, three. So, I have an even better way to show you, okay? So let's say um, I am inputting this note here, right? Just for fun. We have a note right here. So you see this, it kind of zaps into its positions, okay? So this is unison, this is the same, and you move one click up, you got two, you move one click up, you got three. You got one click up, you got four, five, six, seven, eight is an octave. All right, so let's do this together. Pick any note, pick middle C if it's more comfortable for you. Um, and this time, we're gonna use a different note value. We're gonna use the whole note, all right? Make your score nice and big so you can see it. All right, so we're gonna make this a whole note. Um, and I will start on middle C, and you can also start uh, on middle C. So we're going to select this note, and actually, uh, what we're gonna do is 
we have to retype this note. We're gonna have to go in the input mode, see? Um, and all, all you have to do is to select the bar and just type the letter N. This will give you, see, this input mode, okay? Uh, this might do something funny, which is replacing this note. No worries, you just click right on it. Oh, it didn't. All right, that's good. Um, so right now we have a hyperactivity because this little gray note is about to be inputted, but we're only using this to study the, uh, the count, the count of intervals. So on the same note is unison, okay? One click up, which is the space. The space is a two, so one, two. Next is on the line, so one, two, three. So if I do this, this would be a third interval, okay? And then we'll get into how the minor and major third happens. Um, and then let's do one, two, three, four. That's a fourth interval. It's usually the perfect fourth, but things happen to it. Okay, we're gonna venture into the uh, accidentals very soon. Um, and then one, two, three, four, five. So this note would be fifth interval. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be a sixth interval. Seventh interval. Eighth is also known as an octave. This is a ninth. It's a compound interval. That means it's beyond the uh, octave. Ninth. Tenth. Eleventh. Okay, so that's pretty much at this is beyond um, the, the theory that you need to know. All right, so we're gonna go back to this and keep going at our uh, melodic interval study. We're gonna highlight this middle C and we're gonna change it back to a quarter note. You just go here and click right here. Hmm? So you're back to a quarter note and the next note Keep in mind, we're gonna have to advance to the rest in order to keep input, right? So arrow to the next note, which is a rest. This is a quarter note rest, okay? And this is now ready to input. Next, we're going to do a fourth interval and it will have to be one, two, three, four. Oh, there we go and back to a half note. So I'm gonna let you guys fill out the rest, okay? Um, so go back to this and what we're gonna, I'm gonna do this uh, fairly quickly. Um, so to save some time here, and so you can pause, feel free to pause this video and um, at any point and practice what this is. And the next one would be um, very easy. Um, this is bothering me, I'm gonna put it over there. So um, type letter, highlight a bar, type letter R for repeat. Repeat that bar, right? Okay, so move this one note up with the up arrow key, up arrow key. Next, repeat, pick this note, up arrow key would give you six. Repeat, up arrow key, give you the next one. This is the seventh interval. And last one is your octave. All right, so literally you don't have to alt type all the C, it's kind of, you know, pretty obvious. So this would be F, this would be a G, and this would be an A, and this would be a B, and this is C again. Oh, this will be fun. Just do this. Okay, so lyric and A, uh, C, C, C. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, so this is C4, obviously, and this is C5. This is C4 again. All right, so we call this, obviously, an octave. This would be a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, which is also an octave. All right. So now we're going to get into which two, which three, which four is it? In the diatonic scale, diatonic meaning this is all the notes that is within the octave that is within the tonal system. This is a very complicated uh, concept, which um, it's not the purpose of this video. Uh, but during class, I will explain in detail. Okay. So right now we are doing only the diatonic tones, diatonic notes within a major scale. Now, uh, so this one is. See, this note right here, how far is it from the one, from C, the middle C? It is, obviously, one, two, three, four. So what you're doing is you're counting how many semitones, how many half steps there is between these two notes. Okay, you can count it two ways. One is to count, you already know this is a major second, and this is the same distance because there is one note in between, right? So you will discover is major second plus another major second will give you a major third. So this would be a major third, right? So the next one would be this. Oh, but, but you just discovered this. There's all these notes in between, but this one and the E doesn't have a note in between. Well, in terms of fourth interval, this is it. This is a, this is four. There's no minor four. There's no minor fourth. There's no major fourth. There's perfect fourth or diminished fourth or augmented fourth. Okay, this is just to reveal the class material. So what this is, is obviously because it is a major third plus a half step. It's really just one step further from major third. And we call this a perfect fourth. Perfect fourth. All right. So this fourth interval, again, it does not have major or minor to modify it. It is perfect fourth, augmented fourth, or diminished fourth, which is going to be later uh, in the semester, we'll get into this, um, its accidentals, its modification. Don't have to worry about that right now. And the next thing is, ah, this note, right? This G. This G is a perfect fourth plus another major second. See, there's another note in between, okay? Um, and the, what you're gonna discover is that uh, you can either count it this way or you can learn it. You can learn the sound of a major scale. And this would be abundantly clear that this is the fifth scale degree. I'm going to write it out for you. So this would be the fifth scale degree of C major. And the fifth scale degree of C major, major would be capital C. This is always going to be a perfect fifth. So this would be a perfect fifth. All right. Um, next one is a six. Oh, six is going to get very interesting because 
Six and three are related. Four and five are related, as we will find out later, right? So which sixth is this? Well, you can count, obviously. You can count. Uh, all right, so this is um, a perfect fifth. Mm. And then we add another major second on top. Right, this is a major second. This would give us a major sixth. Major sixth. Right, this is a major sixth. And if it is perfect fifth plus a half step plus a minor second, this this would be a minor sixth interval. See, you can hear the difference, right? This is a major sixth interval. This is a minor sixth interval. Okay, in this context of C major diatonic, C major scale. Next note is the B. Now, the B, that's interesting. Okay, so what is this? Well, how about we go the other way? Now, it is an octave. Next one is the octave. We already know it. And subtract it by a half step. What you get is a major seven. And this is about as much tension as there is because this it really wants to go there. The note seems to be such a there's so much tension in there. You really want to go there, right? Okay, so this is the diatonic intervals, and what we're gonna um, take a look at here is. Um, major seventh is just an octave minus a half step. And an octave minus a whole step would give us minor seventh. It's less tension here. It's less tension, right? Comparing to E. Less sharp. That's major seventh. This is minor seventh. We have major sixth, minor sixth. Yeah. So you actually get to hear all of this without a piano. You get to hear all of this interval right here. Okay, and if I were you, what's a tip for learning notes? Is to sing with it, all right? So you don't have an instrument in front of you, no worries. What we're gonna do is, all right, we're gonna, um, you have options. I prefer you do solfege. Solfege is just saying, uh, pronouncing the, uh, the note names, okay? And this is how we are going to internalize the tones. So it's no longer just spelling it, counting it on the page, right? So what we really want to do here is to make the sound connect with the visual and with what we learned in the theoretical frame so that you can um, have a feel for what these intervals sound like in, in your body. So um, I'll model it for you. Please feel free to sing with me, okay? Um, so uh, sing it in the bathroom if you want. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, this is not beautiful music because we're learning interval, melodic interval, all right? But we're going to do the best we can. So let's begin with the first bar, all right? So it is... Do, re, do. Do, mi, do. Do, fa, do. Do, 
so do do la do do si do 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 all right this is how it how it goes the interval gets larger and larger they're further 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 apart from each other all right and this isn't the whole picture yet <laughs> uh, to make it consistent and pretty you know you're welcome to click all these in and it just indicates that this is a melodic interval it's meant um you know to be consecutive one after another okay uh just for your reference i am going to put all the selfish notes here uh for your reference so so basically what this is is This could be this, or some is this, and do. All right, so here's what you got. All right, you don't have to connect these two, but this is it. All right, next. Oh, look at this. Let's put these guys on one staff. Nice. Okay, you don't have to worry about this. All right, next we are going to take a look at harmonic intervals. So we're going to do harmonic intervals. So what does it mean, harmonic intervals? Two notes stacked up together. Yeah? So they are being played together. And the way we show it is, oh, same thing. We're going to take a note and we're just going to click in. All right. So there you go. You have a major second. That's a harmonic interval. Oh, what is this? Well, these guys <laughs> are the inversions of each other, right? So you have a D on top. Let's make this nice and big. You have a D on top. And if you move this D an octave lower, and you can do this by just dragging it. This is a ray. Hmm? And you get this. And you can move this one octave up. So eighth. then you get this. Uh, yeah, so this, obviously, we already know this. This is a major second. So you just label this major second, All right? Next, we're gonna do a, this obviously is, oh, by the way, uh, since, oh, I should, do this a little easier on you so this is a major second a major second inverts into let's make this nice and big major second inverts to minor seventh this and this These are inversions of each other, all right? So what we're gonna do here is just to listen to them together. If, if you click on them, double click on them, you'll hear them together. See, you can hear them. And then, so that's what minor seventh sounds like. And then we can, all, of course, make this this note, which would make it a 
take a look at the keyboard. If we were to expand, further push it apart, would make it a major seventh. Watch. E. I meant just this note into the D flat. So you have to modify it right here. So. So this. So take a look at this key and this key are lit up. So this sounds. It wants to go there or. Right, it's very sharp. All right. Um, so this would be a major seventh. Sounds sharp. Okay, but uh, we're not doing it today. We're just going to invert. So uh, do the conventional inversions. All right, so major second inverts to minor seventh. Now, next, we're going to move this interval. We're going to type letter R to repeat it. Take the top note, highlight the top note, and command down arrow for an octave lower. So now you have another inversion happening. So this, as we know, is a major third invert into a minor six. All right, by now, I hope you are discovering a pattern here. These two numbers always add up to nine. All right, so this is a minor six, and but it kind of still sound on the dark side, no? It's it's a minor six, right? And so in comparison to this would be a major six. Like we did before, we could push it a little bit further apart, which means this E is gonna be an E flat. So we just click on the flat. There you go. What we have here is a major six. Okay, but we're not concerned with that right now. So I'll undo it. Command Z will undo it. So right now, this is it. And you are welcome to continue all of this, which is to say that all of the intervals up here can be inverted in the melodic interval. Right, so uh, I will just quickly do this. We have, oh, wrong key, R. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna make this the F, and of course this becomes F, all right? Perfect fourth inverts into perfect fifth. <laughs> uh, all I did is just typing the arrow key. You can move the notes up and down once highlighted with the arrow key. Uh, perfect fifth inverts into perfect fourth. There you go. Next, same thing. We have we have a major sixth inverts into A minor third. <laughs> and ooh, this is a little hard to see. Next one is this is a major seventh inverts into minor second. One last one. 
Yeah. So this is octave inverts octave inverts to unison. All right. So this is kind of mm, let's just move it to yeah. Um oh, these are I guess Ah, here we go. Hmm? Now, we have ourselves some inversions in harmonic intervals. All right? So, now, how are we going to do this? We're going to double click any interval. This is what major sevens sounds like. Hmm? This is minor second, sound like. It's very, very, very close. It's like they're fighting each other, these notes, right? Um, mm, they kind of want to go this. And what did I just play? Ah, I just played this interval. Okay, next, and this is the final um, interval we're going to study, which is no longer going to be in the environment of the diatonic major scale. We're going to venture into, aha, hold on to your seat, the chromatic scale. Okay, um, you don't have to immediately know what the chromatic scale is um, and how we're going to spell it because we're going to spell it at the same time as we learn these intervals. This, my friend, is an octave. There are a total of 12 notes. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then goes back to C. So between C and C, there are a total of 12 notes that are uh, arranged in the chromatic scale. Chromatic, as the name suggests, chromatic just means that we're including not just the Y key, not just the diatonic, which is the notes only exist in a defined scale. We're including all of the keys, the black keys and the white keys. The white keys and the black keys. So, what does this mean? <laughs> We're going to type it in so that um, you'll see what I mean. All right, so N, the letter N for no input, and we're just going to key this in. So, C, C sharp. And the last one is C again, so let's make it nice and big. All right, so um, this is Sibelius default spelling. No good, no good. We're going to um, we're going to press enter in order to make it. You see, this is a note. This is a note that we have problem with. The spelling, okay? This note can be a E, can be a E flat, it can also be a D sharp. They're called the harmonic, uh, the inharmonics. They are inharmonics, they are equivalent, all right? So we're gonna press enter, and this becomes a D sharp. And you press enter again, it back to an E flat. And D sharp, E flat, D sharp, E flat. All right, we want D sharp here because we are ascending. In the ascending chromatic scale, we are using all sharps. This is good. This is good. This is not good. So we're going to select this and press enter. We get the inharmonic of B flat, which is A sharp. All right, vice versa. 
as we descend. As we descend, we only use flats. Here, I'm gonna remind you here. <laughs> I'm gonna type this in as big uh, letters, okay? Uh, box text, okay. So, ascending chromatic scale always spell with sharps and descending chromatic scale always spell with flats yep we're gonna make this on the next line. All right, so four in harmonics. So now we can make intervals with all of these notes, right? And, um, and that's gonna be basically, that's the work. That's the work and you're gonna have to uh, Memorize it first. This is how it goes. And then um, we will have the pleasure of clicking on it, double click to hear it, or you can click it this way. This is how, and then you sing with it. So, do, so. Yeah. And the chromatic scale, oh my God, it's like a three dimensional thing then it's like you really have to like zone in on that pitch because these pitch are not in the diatonic scale. It's an unfamiliar. It's a sort of those very, very raw ingredients that hasn't been, you know, processed into a scale yet. So this is just very, very raw, okay? So let's give it a try. And we're gonna do um, slightly, mm, yeah, slightly smaller intervals. So we're gonna do, what we're gonna do first is Actually, oh, we're going to do this actually, um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this in one shot. So, all right. Um, as you can see, um, we are spelling, oh, yeah, okay, this, this is fine. So we're going to spell the intervals in very different logic. See, this is melodic, melodic chromatic scale, all right? This is how you spell a chromatic scale. But if we're making intervals out of the chromatic scale, Right? The spelling changes. For example, same notes, right? But you see, if I spell it as a second, this would be a minor second. Okay? You can, of course, say, uh, Professor Wang, I'm going to change this note and I'm going to press enter. Then I got myself a c c sharp c right what's wrong with that well there's actually nothing wrong theoretically this is no longer a minor second it is an augment augmented unison right so yeah they're both correct there is no wrong spelling without the context of how they're going to uh, appear in the network whether the network is completely chromatic or 
is it in a diatonic in a diatonic world nobody is going to um, spell a minor second this way so what we're going to do is change it back to a d sharp a d my d d flat so this would be a minor second and the next one would be a major second next one would be a minor third next one would be a major third next one is a perfect fourth next one oh this one's special it's an augmented fourth all right we're going to talk a little more about that because it is spelled as a four but pushed out one semitone one half step right okay next is a perfect fifth next is a minor six next is a major six next is a minor seventh next is a major seventh the next is an octave so now we have these um awesome looking intervals and uh we're going to um take a look at all of their inharmonic spellings all right what we're going to do is uh we're going to make them even smaller even smaller all right go to the keypad turn them into 16th notes so and click on this and we're going to hit the uh, letter r to repeat this and now oh actually uh, to make it easier let's not have all the beams together let's make the beams let's go to the third uh, tab here and just make all the beams individual and this way we can see it more clearly all right so this guy here press enter for the inharmonic it sounds sounds exactly the same see that but this one is a augmented unison oh takes a lot of room okay this is an augmented unison and minor a major major second i don't think um you can really do anything about it except you could probably because this it does not have an inharmonic you know because d d d is d you know d doesn't doesn't have inharmonic um <laughs> right uh but c has an inharmonic c could be spelled as a b sharp so yeah we're gonna copy uh duplicate this guy and respell this and this uh my god um musicians will hate you if you write it this way if you literally musicians will like refuse uh to like you <laughs> because this is just not very courteous spelling right so as you can see this is kind of this would be called a diminished third like it just it doesn't exist so theoretically you can spell it this way and play with the software this way but i don't recommend it okay so this we're gonna leave it as a oh come on work with me yeah so we're gonna leave this one we're gonna leave this one in the um in its um <laughs> so bad um in its rest this is also um uh, we're gonna have problems uh with it being um this would be a, a second interval but what is it it's an augmented second right so again um we're getting into very very weird territory it's only in very late stage um, romantic repertoire that in very chromatic repertoire that uh, composers would consider spelling a augmented augmented second 
Okay, augmented second is sounds about sounds exactly the same as a minor third, but because of the way it is spelled, okay, um, we um, we only use it in very specific situations that are um, that are that are beyond the scope of this course. So I would also recommend you not to worry about this. So hit delete and, and feel good about it. Yeah, okay, so, um, so on and so forth. So what I would like you to, there's one, there's one interval, which is this one, that I want you to pay special attention to, all right? So I'm gonna color this one because this is like important to know. So this guy, is an augmented fourth. So let's take a look. So we have it right here. And if you take this note and move it up an octave, hmm, it actually sounds pretty similar, right? Sound similar? Well, it sounds similar because, as you can see, this note right here, it's right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh note. So this literally is in the dead middle of the 12 notes in the octave. So augmented fourth, also known as a tritone. A tritone just means there is one, two, three whole notes. So three whole notes stacked up together, you get a tritone, okay? And tritone can be spelled as this or we can press enter on the F sharp and turn it into a G flat. Ah, it's still a tritone, but this would be a diminished fifth because it's five. See, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm? And five, but it's squashed a little bit. It's a little bit closer than a perfect fifth. So that's why it's diminished fifth, all right? So let's undo it and let's make it back to augmented fourth. And then we're going to duplicate this one and make it official. This is oh, hmm, a diminished five. So actually, um, Everything that you need to know about the spelling of interval are more or less gonna be here. I'm not gonna test you um, augmented, diminished, or you know, seconds or those very, very obscure spellings. It is not uh, required at all. But you do have to be able to identify the common, the most common intervals that we have listed from our um, course today. And it is vital that you practice these notes with singing. I, I will demonstrate and please feel free to follow me. So this would be, oh, I'm gonna make it nice and big for you here. So it's, as close as it gets, right? So it's do, re, do. It's a red flat, but doesn't matter. Do, re, do. And then double click and then hear them together. Mm -hmm. Do, re, do. This is a major second. Uh -huh. And 
ideally, you click on this, you hear them together, and you know it's a minor third, so it's do, mi, do. Do, mi, do, it's a major third. Do, mi, do. Do, mi, do is a minor third. Do, mi, do is a major third. Do, fa, do is a perfect fourth. Do, fa, do is a tritone. Do, but you don't have to sing this one, it's very awkward. Do, so, do is a perfect fifth. Do, la, do is a minor sixth. Do, la, do is a major sixth. Do, si, do is a minor seventh. Do, si, do is a major seventh. Do, do, do is an octave. All right. So, in order to practice your uh, inversions, one way to do this is... All right, let's get rid of this guy. Uh, so, one way to do this is... Let's copy this whole thing. That is copy, that is command C. And then let's go ahead and just paste it right here. All right? So, let's make it so that, um, mm -hmm. oh, this is, this is a little bit too complicated for, for this note value. Eh, I guess we'll just have to uh, create a new note value. No problem. Let's do it. Uh, so how about just, yeah, half notes. So we have um, this. Ooh. And we're going to invert and just basically Right, and invert. Mm -hmm. So, how do we do this? Do, re, do, this is a minor second. Re, do, re, that's very hard. Don't, don't be discouraged if you can't hit this interval, it's very hard. And so, do, re, do, re, do, re. This is minor second. And this is major seventh. There you go. Do, re, do. Re, do, re. Obviously, major second. And we have minor seventh. Do, mi, do. Mi, do, mi. Okay, now I'm just showing off, but you know what I mean. Do, mi, do. Mi, do, mi. Major third plus a minor six. Do, fa, do. Fa, do, fa. Obviously, perfect. Perfect fourth inverts into a perfect fifth. Do, fa, do, fa, do, fa. A 
again, this is a very hard interval to nail, so don't be discouraged. Tritone inverts into a tritone. All you have to do is tritone. You don't have to say it's augmented fourth and diminished fifth. Do, so, do. So, do, so. Inverts into a perfect fifth, inverts into a perfect fourth. So on, so forth. And you can complete this. All right. So, save this file. And um, so your homework really is, um, and this is all going to depend on your work ethic and how much time you actually spend um, as the mileage of, you know, it's, it, you, there's no shortcut um, as in anything. As in life, there is no shortcut. So uh, how do you, how do you uh, work, work the fitness of these musical muscles? Uh, how do you zero it in? so that it's precise and it's very accurate, right? How do you develop a feeling for what these distance between the notes um, is? And all of this are uh, gonna depend on the mileage, how much you stay with these notes and uh, stare at the keyboard. So the keyboard is like a picture in your mind so you know what lids up when which note is being pressed, all of that. All of that right now are separate parts in your head. Um, but once you repeat it enough, once you actually do the work, do the mileage, put down the time, we're not talking about a lot of time. We're talking about maybe, you know, uh, an hour a week, um, which is not a lot of time for, um, you know, for, for other subjects that you're in school for. An hour, two hours is like really, really good amount of time. To, or you can say 10 minutes a day. There's no, uh, there's no like sweet spot because every individual is different, okay? Um, so you can say, I'm gonna start with five minutes a day. Five minutes, I'm gonna open Sibelius and I'm just gonna click these intervals and I'm gonna sing along. I'm gonna get my body to sync up with these frequencies. And this is how these uh, muscles gets their fitness and there's no other way around. Okay, have fun. And uh, this is a big graduation uh, for um, a lot of you because we are no longer just getting to know the notes. And now we're actually getting to discover their relationships, like who likes who, which note likes which note, which note doesn't like which note, right? And actually you get to decide you get to decide whether um, minor second is too sharp for your ear, whether you want to resolve it somehow, find a mellower, less sharp sound. This is all, it's, it's an open, it's an, it's a, it's the open playground. It's, these are just notes and how you interpret them, uh, how you interpret their relationship um, is going to decide. Um, you can decide it for yourself. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Have fun. Good luck. <laughs>